in verse 16. I've spoke for the last two Sundays here in, in, in this book, Hebrews chapter 6, or in this chapter. And I spoke about, first of all, followers through faith. We are followers of Christ through faith. It's, it's faith. It's not our works. It's not us. We follow Him by faith. And we walk by faith. And then last Sunday I preached about to obtain the promise. We have, as he tells us in verse 15 of this chapter, we as children of God can and have obtained the promise of God. I want to speak about it if the Lord will help me this morning on the heirs of promise have a strong consolation. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 16. For man verily swear by the greater an oath for confirmation. It's to them an end of all strife. We'll talk about that here in a moment. Because those are words that sound hard to understand. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the elders a promise, the immutability, we'll talk about that word, of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation. Who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth in, which entereth into that within the veil, where the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made a high priest forever, after the order of Meshazadek. Father, touch your word this morning. Let it go forth. Let it accomplish. Let it bring to pass the things you sent it forth to do. Help us to see we are heirs of the promise. Why should we look anywhere else? Why should we turn to the right hand or to the left? Why should we go back to this world? Why should we look for the things of this world to satisfy? They never will. We are heirs of promise. And because of that, we have a strong consolation, Lord. We, 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 Lord, have such a, a blessing, a peace that is heaped upon us, Lord, as your heirs. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning, I want us to realize that as children of God, by faith, not by works, by faith, by believing the finished work of the cross, by receiving that, by asking forgiveness upon the basis of Him and His cross, that we now are heirs of promise. Now the devil would have you to think you're nothing and you're nobody. That you don't have anything and you're never going to have anything, but you need to remind him who your father is. You need to remind him that you are an heir of the promise, being a child of God. In verse 16, what he is telling us, that the contract has been signed and agreed upon. Christ Jesus signed that contract, Brother David, with His blood. Oh, hallelujah. We now are a child of Almighty God. That confirmation. We are His child. When He looks at me, when He looks at you, He doesn't see your faults, He doesn't see your failures, He doesn't see your shortcomings, but He looks and He sees the blood, oh hallelujah, of His dear Son Christ Jesus. He sees that you have faith in Christ and His cross. And He says, there's my son and there's my daughter. Now the devil is the accuser of the brethren. He'll bring condemnation. Now the Holy Spirit brings conviction. Amen. Does he not? Brother Robert testified this morning about that and thank God he does because if he didn't, we wouldn't be his children. But he'll bring conviction, but he will not bring condemnation. The devil brings condemnation, telling you how down low you are, how far away you are, and God doesn't know where you're at, and God doesn't care, but God knows exactly where you're at. If you have the blood of Jesus Christ applied to your heart, and you by faith have believed in it, you are his child, you are his son, you are his daughter, and he cares for you. And he will not leave you, and he will not forsake you. We'll go on here about other things that I've got to talk about this. But by faith, the promise, he is saying in verse 16, is force. 
It is working in our lives. You can count on it. You can believe in it. You can hold to it. You can trust in it. Then in verse 17, he talks about the immutability of his counsel. And what he is saying is God will not change his position. Thank God God is not a man. Thank God God is not a politician. Did I say that? I'm sorry. I'd hurt somebody's feelings if I ain't careful, won't I? Both sides of the aisles. Amen? It's getting quiet. Both sides of the aisles. They're this way when they're talking to this crowd. They're this way when they're talking to the other crowd. But not God. God does not... mm, I feel the Holy Ghost. But R.J., God does not change. He is what He is. What He always has been, what He is now, and what He will be does not change. He is the same today, yesterday, and forever, and He does not change. You can count on Him. His position, His promise is true. It is yea. It is everlasting. He has told me today I am forgiven and I know this morning, oh hallelujah, that position will not change. He talks about here in verse 17 about the unchangeable purpose of God. The unchangeable purpose that God has called all Gentiles and Jews to salvation. That all who believe, that all who call upon Him, that all who will receive Him, that all that will accept Him, He will not change that position. John 3 and 16 will not change. For whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That will not change. You can count on it. You can depend upon it. All those who believe. Romans 8. If you want to flip over there with me. Romans chapter 8. You know it very well. We don't got time to read it all this morning. It's a beautiful, beautiful chapter. You ought to read and read and reread that chapter. But Romans chapter 8 and verse 15. You see, God will not change. He has made us a part of the family of God and He will not change. For we have, verse 15, listen of chapter 8 of Romans, for we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Why do we walk in fear? I said we. I'm not speaking down to you. I'm talking to us. Why do we walk in worry? God has delivered us from that. Why do we go back and allow the enemy to put his chains on us again? Right here. Right here is where he chains up, isn't it? We all fall into that and we worry and we fret, but we have not received that spirit of bondage. Listen, but we have received, oh hallelujah, I feel His presence. I might be able to get through this without shouting this morning. I don't know if you feel the Holy Ghost in this house like I do, but I sure pray you do. Listen to these words. But but ye have received the spirit of adoption. Glory be to God. Whereby we cry, Abba, Father. I am a part of the family of God. When fear and worry and strife comes and the old devil says you'll not make it, what are you going to do when this happens? What are you going to do when that happens? You can say I'm a child of the king. He has all, he has all things under control. He did, he's not caught by surprise. He saw that coming. God's already prepared a way. I don't know what it is, but I know that I'm a child of the king. He is my father. I have received that spirit of adoption, not of fear. Listen, in verse 16 for the spirit itself oh my that spirit within you this morning that spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God when you began to praise and you began Pastor David to magnify his name the good spirit of God I heard Pastor David right there beside of me this morning and the spirit of God just moving all up and down the avenues of his soul why because he's the son of God almighty because God and his spirit oh glory be to God is working in his life others this morning I've seen the spirit of God 
God come down and touch us. Sister Norma up here teaching this morning. The Spirit of God came down and began to bless her as she thought about a time in her life when God reached down and lifted her up. Thank God that Spirit will bear witness and will let us know. Oh, you don't walk by feeling, but I thank God He reaches down and He touches my filler every once in a while. I thank God He reaches down and He, and he gives me that sweet presence of His Spirit. And I know, Brother RJ, that I'm wrapped in His arms. And I know He'll not leave me. And I know He'll never forsake me. But His hand is upon me. Oh, hallelujah. The, the preacher's showing up here this morning. Verse 17. And if children... Now listen to this. You're not one of them childs. You're not one of those children that's been left off the wheel. You're not one of those that's been kicked to the curb. Listen. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God. And joint heirs, this is in the book. I, I'm not just saying this. Joint heirs, do you, can you believe this? Joint heirs with Christ. Whew. Oh my goodness. And we, I'm saying we, and we walk around like beggars. And we walk around wringing our hands and fretting and, and worrying. Glory be to God. And our elder brother is Christ Jesus. And he's told me to pull my feet up under his table. He's, God has told me to call upon him. And whatever I have need of, he'll answer me. He's told us where two or three agree together as touching anything. If that mountain is standing in your way, He's told us that mountain will be made smooth. I'm a joint heir. I'm a child. And joint heirs with Christ, if so be that you suffer with Him, that you may be also glorified together. I've got to skip down and read these two verses. I, I can't hardly read this chapter without reading these two verses. Verse 31, listen. You need to take this to your heart this morning because we're going to get down rough here in a little bit. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who? Whew. Who can be against us? He that spared not His own Son. Did you hear that? He gave His own Son for you. Then the devil comes up and tells you nobody loves you. Come on, I get in that same spot. Nobody cares for you. Devil, you're a liar. He gave his son Christ Jesus for me. Spire not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He gave us His Son, Christ Jesus, to die on the cross for my sin, that by faith in Him I might have salvation and be a part of the family of God. He's also going to freely. I don't have to beg Him. I don't have to plead. I, I don't have to do all this. I just by faith believe, go to Him and know He will make a way. That is unchangeable. That will not change. And then in verse 18 He tells us that we have a strong Consolation. You see, we have a hope. It is immutable. It is something that will not change. It's impossible that God's going to lie. We have that strong, blessed consolation. Sister Norma described it like this this morning. I thought it was good to be wrapped up like in a cocoon, to feel the warmth and the power and the presence of the Spirit of God right when I'm in the midst of trouble. I've been with y'all to things and situations, seen things come in your life that I thought would surely change take you down. I've seen troubles and cares that would take a lot of people down in this world, but I've seen the Holy Ghost of God. Oh, hallelujah. Sister Liz come down and wrap His good sweet presence around our hearts and around our lives and warm us and give His protection and give His love. That strong consolation. We as heirs of promise have that and it will not change. It is immutable. It cannot change in our lives. You see, we have a hope that will not fail. Things in this world will fail. Listen to me. I'm not trying to bring fear on you. That Social Security you're depending on 
could fail tomorrow. That almighty dollar, you say, well, I'm not dependent on Social Security. I've got, I've got it laid back. That dollar could be useless tomorrow. That's how quick it could happen. could be useless. But I'm thankful I'm not trusting those things, Brother R.J. I'm like the psalmist David. I've been young and old, yet I've not seen the, the, the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. I know that God will make a way for me. I have that consolation. I have that blessed hope in my soul and in my heart. It is a hope that will not fail. It is a hope that cannot fail. It is a hope that is always there in the dark wee hours of the night when it seems like nobody knows that hope is there. You see, it is a hope that we can lay upon. In the book of Hebrews, we want to talk about it when we get to chapter 12, the Lord willing, about verse 2, He tells us, looking unto Jesus, the author, the one who started us on the way and the finisher of our faith. You see, I can look to Him and I can hold on it. Pastor Doug, why do you talk about looking to the cross and believing in the cross? Because that's looking unto Jesus. When I keep the cross before me, oh, hallelujah, and His Spirit working in my life. Whatever the devil brings, God, Brother Brandon, is going to bring victory. He's going to make a way where there seemeth to be no way if I keep my eyes looking unto Jesus. Not looking to the left hand. Not looking to the right hand. Not trying to figure out on my own how I can work myself out of that situation. Boy, I do that a lot, don't you? Amen? Amen? but trusting in Him, looking unto Jesus, believing in that hope that will not fail. And then he said this, and I want to I, I comment here just a minute on the end. He said that hope, it is set before us. Do you realize that hope is right before us? Hear me now. I spoke the other Sunday about Peter looking at Jesus. And as long as his eyes was upon Jesus, as long as he was trusting in Jesus... That was his hope that was set before him. That was, his, that was the thing that held him secure. That hope is set before us. But wait out now. Hold on. Hold till you see here just a minute. Is that hope set before you? Is it really? It's, mm, I feel the Holy Ghost of God. Has something knocked that hope out of your eyes? Hear me now. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost of God. Has something pushed that hope aside and you're looking to the world? Mm, come on. Are you trusting in things and you no longer have that hope as your focus? Brother Doug, that's all old fogey. We've we got to get what we got to get now. We, if we're going to have any pleasure, if we're going to enjoy life, we've got to do it now. You're never going to enjoy life outside of Christ. Can I just lay it in our laps here? Outside of Christ, life is nothing but a prison. Outside of Christ, life has no hope. Why are people dying every day from alcohol and drugs and such sin and degradation? Because they have No hope. That hope is set before. Don't ever let that hope get out of your eyes. Hear me this morning. Ever keep that hope set before you. If something else starts trying to shine brighter, push it aside. Cut it off. Do away. Keep that blessed hope before you. He went on in verse 19. I've got to hurry. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. There's a song that is sung, The anchor holds in spite of the storm. Aren't you glad the anchor holds? My life, your life, I've seen the storms come, I've seen the waves happen, but I'm thankful, Brother Joshua, that anchor in Christ Jesus held. That anchor holds, it'll hold you. 
The grace that started you on this journey. One of the reasons I love the song Amazing Grace is because of verse 3. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. Tis grace has brought me safe thus far. And grace, oh glory be to God, grace, Brother Bobby, is going to lead me through them gates where I see Jesus. That hope is an anchor of our soul. He said it is both sure and steadfast that it enters into within the veil Christ, our great high priest. Isn't that a wonderful thing that Christ, our high priest, we can enter in right in there to His presence through His blood that's been applied to our heart. We don't have to go to some priest and pray to Him. We don't have to go to somebody and confess our sins. We can go right to the throne room of God Almighty and through His dear Son Christ Jesus there have an audience with God. Flip with me. I'm going to read one more portion of Scripture. And I'm going to try to close. Isaiah chapter 40. Thank you, Holy Ghost of God. Mm. If you don't have these verses marked in your Bible, you ought to. This week, as I had these things on my mind and asking the Lord what He would have me to bring out. The internet can be a good thing. I didn't hear no amen, but it's the truth. It can be a good thing. We don't need to let the devil take things and use them. Amen? It's a good thing. And, and this verse came in on the Bible on my phone. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 28. And the Lord said, mark that, keep it. Write it down somewhere I said, well, Lord, how's that going to fit in? And I believe here's how it fits in. Listen. Isaiah 40 and verse 28. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? Listen. There is no searching of his understanding. i got to go and read the rest of these verses. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increaseth strength. Oh, hallelujah. You preach a sermon on these just these verses. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young man shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Can I just talk to you for just a moment? You ever get your children aside? I know you do because I've seen you. And you say... Had not I told you not to do that? Didn't you know better than that? The one that gets on my nerves is, why'd you do that? I just want to shake you parents when you say that. Because they're human. That's what God's saying here. Listen, that's what God's saying to some of us here this morning. You hear me this morning? Oh, I feel His presence. Don't you turn God's message away this morning? Don't you know? Hadn't you heard? Are you not listening? You ever hear God's Spirit say that? I have. I've had Him to shake me pretty good. Why can't you hear? Has thou not known? Why would we... Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Why do people turn from the wonderful promises of God? Why do they turn from those things that they know are yea and are everlasting? Why did they turn from those things and turn to waller in the world and the things of Satan? Why? Why play with those things? 
Oh, I'm, I'm not going to wallow. I'm just going to kind of flirt around with it. I'm just going to kind of play around with it. It will destroy you. If you are not careful, those things will become conceived in your heart. Hear me this morning. And it will destroy you. Have you not heard? In other words, the Spirit of God is saying, Will you not listen? Salvation. Fulfillment. Joy. Is not in the world. It is in Christ. It is in Him and Him alone. Listen to what He promised. Listen to what he promised. He gave the power to the faint. When I can't go on anymore, he gives me strength. He gives me power. He gives me ability. When I wait upon him, he will renew that strength. I can mount up with wings. I can walk and not faint. I can run and not be weary. God is available to you through faith in Christ Jesus. Why won't we hear? And why won't we receive? Father, I thank you. Mm. Sweet Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Let's stand for just a moment this morning. Pastor David, if you'll make your way up this way. Thank you, Jesus. Can you just reverence him for just a moment? Can you allow the Spirit to speak to your heart? Has it been a while since you've got still and quiet? And let the Holy Ghost speak to your heart and to your mind. Lord, I stand in your presence this morning. Search me, O oh God. Know me this morning. Has some shiny thing got in front of my eyes, Lord, that has taken my eyes from you and that blessed hope that's my anchor, that's my consolation. That promise. There's nothing in this world that will ever fulfill those things. Only you. Stir in my spirit this morning, God. Oh, hallelujah. Stir in my heart this morning. Move in my soul. Glory to God. That shiny thing that is there, take it away, Lord. For I want to see Jesus. I want everyone that will and can real quickly to come and stand around this altar. If you're not going to have an honest heart, don't come this morning. But everybody with an honest heart this morning is going to come before His presence in honesty and stand this morning. Come on. Get right up close. Oh, hallelujah.